This video is the third in a series of tutorials on biological nomenclature. The first video in this series dealt with the history of biological nomenclature and touched on some reasons why the standardization of nomenclature is important. The second gave details about gene nomenclature. This video covers nomenclature of quantitative trait loci, or QTLs. As far as the nomenclature of QTLs in RGD is concerned, we follow the guidelines compiled by the RAT Genome and Nomenclature Committee. These say that a QTL symbol should have a stem consisting of an abbreviation of the name, followed by a serial number. RGD curates all RAT QTLs. RGD also curates human QTLs based on specific projects. Mouse QTLs are imported from the Mouse Genome Informatics MGI group at the Jackson Lab. To distinguish human or mouse QTLs from rat QTLs in RGD, we add underscore H to the symbols for human QTLs and underscore M to the symbol for mouse QTLs. A QTL name has a root name that describes the trait that is measured and a serial number. For human and mouse, this is followed by the word human, or mouse, in parentheses. The only way to reliably obtain the next available serial number for an already established root name is to contact the respective database for QTL nomenclature, that is, RGD for rat and human, and MGI for mouse. Searching for the next number in the public version of that database is not advisable, as another group may have a number reserved but it is private, pending publication. When naming QTLs, we try to use the author's symbol and name where possible, assuming that they reflect the trait. There are, however, exceptions. For instance, we avoid using designations which are the same as existing gene symbols, because both gene and QTL symbols are required to be unique within a species. Disease names are also generally avoided since they do not constitute quantitative measurements. Because a QTL is a statistical linkage between a quantitative trait and a genomic region and is dependent on the methods used, we create distinct QTL records and therefore assign separate names to QTLs on the basis of several criteria. For example, if the crosses or strains are different, if a congenic is developed to confirm or narrow the region, then it's a new QTL. Each new experiment is a new QTL. Similar studies in two labs give two separate QTLs as the assays may differ. Also, if more than one trait is measured, then again these are considered different QTLs. In RGD report pages, we mention relationships between QTLs if they mapped the same region, interact with or are syntenic to each other, or if one is a subregion of the other. Here are some problems we've seen with QTL nomenclature in the literature. Sometimes researchers use the measurement technique rather than the trait to name their QTLs. For example, open field inner locomotion or glucose tolerance test. Another problematic practice is to use the same QTL number for a subregion QTL that was assigned to the previous parent QTL, making it impossible to distinguish the two. Sometimes names are too specific. Many are based on diseases, or they incorporate the position, chromosome number, strain, symbols, gene names, and so on as part of the QTL name. RGD is in the process of developing a trait ontology, which will address some of these issues by standardizing the designations for their traits upon which QTL names are based. As with most rules, however, there are some exceptions. For instance, disease-based names have been retained for some historic QTLs, such as the insulin-dependent and non-insulin-dependent diabetes QTLs. Such nomenclature is so well established in the research community that it would be counterproductive to change it. However, such exceptions are rare. 
Before we begin talking about the details of naming markers, I would like to point out the importance of registering your research group, lab, or institution at the Institute for Animal Research, or ILAR. If your lab has an ILAR code, this will be used in naming your marker. If it does not, you should contact RGD in order to receive a lab code. That is a unique three to four letter code which identifies your group or institution. This will be assigned and is used in naming SSLPs and strains to identify your group as the one where the SSLP or strain was developed and or maintained. For more on the use of lab codes in naming strains, please view our tutorial on strain nomenclature. A rat simple sequence length polymorphism, or SSLP, is named in the format D for DNA fragment, chromosome number, lab code, and then a sequential number, for example, D1MIT8. There are some exceptions to this. For instance, some mouse SSLPs are also used in rat. In that case, the symbol is constructed as D, then the rat chromosome number, followed by the symbol of the mouse marker. The systematic nomenclature assigned by RGD is picked up by other databases, such as UniSTS, when they download our files. We strongly encourage our users to submit their data for strains, gene variants, QTLs, and SSLPs to RGD. This ensures that the data in RGD is complete and accurate and that your results are publicly available as required by many funding agencies. Submitting data is a very simple process. When you submit a QTL directly to RGD, RGD makes sure the symbol and name comply with the RGNC nomenclature guidelines and that the correct numbers are used we make sure that they are named on the basis of the measured phenotypes. Similar QTLs are given the same root symbol and assign sequential numbers. We assign RGD IDs to submitted QTLs and send you these IDs so that you can use them in your publications. To begin the process, click on the Data tab at the top of any RGD page, then select Submit Data. This leads you to our data submission forms for strains, gene variants, and QTLs. On the form for QTL submission, enter the contact information of the PI and of the submitter whom we can contact if we need some clarification. For QTLs, required data includes the symbol, name and trait, as well as peak and or flanking markers, and statistical data such as the LOD score. The form also gives you the option of choosing whether you want your data to be public or not. Needless to say, we are equipped to hold the data and will not release it on our website until we have your permission or the paper is published. Once the data is released, it is visible as QTL reports and in our tools such as GBrowse, where you can see valuable information such as the corresponding syntenic regions in other organisms or the genes that lie within your QTL. If you need help with submitting your data or with naming your QTL before submission, RGD curators are always available to help. Contact us at rgd.data at mcw.edu or by using the Contact Us link on any RGD page. If you would like information on naming genes or strains, you can go to RGD's video tutorial website and watch the respective nomenclature videos. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.